Whew, it's hot, isn't it, little buddy? Shadow and I have hiked high up into the mountains on a day where it was 109 degrees in the valley floor down there. Up here, it's a nice, cool, breezy, oh, I'd say about 90, and that's a big difference. But it's worth it when you find beautiful chalcedony like this. It's just gorgeous, gorgeous sea maggot. We did a video from this location before where we found this and we know where it comes from. It comes from up there. So we're going to go ahead and hike up to the source and see if we can find some bigger pieces. And along the way we're going to talk about the geology of this area a little bit because it's fascinating. This rock right here, and right over there, that's dolomite. This area was once an ancient seabed, and you find, as you get down lower, lots of sandstone. You find limestone, you find dolomite, which is in the, the limestone family. Uh, kind of think of it as limestone with a lot of magnesium, and often other heavy elements too, like lead, iron, uh, a lot of pyrite sometimes in it. There definitely is pyrite in this dolomite around here. I've seen it. And so we see here dolomite, and then you see this red stuff. That's rhyolite. And that's coming from a volcanic source above, as well as right here from the hillside. And this volcanic rock here that is where we find in the seams often the agate, the chalcedony that we're finding around here. So we're going to march our way up further and we'll see what we can locate. Oh wow, 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 wow. There's a beautiful piece right there. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous, big, beautiful piece of chalcedony. I want to look right there, right underneath it. This one has more of the blue. This is more pinkish. Okay, we are in a good spot. Let's keep looking around. You know, if I don't sound as enthusiastic as I normally do, it's this heat. Whew. It takes it out of you. But we've made it up. You can see how high we've come. Shadow is taking refuge there in the shade. But now that we're up here where the volcanic outcrop is, you can begin to see how this is formed. You see a piece right there inside that volcanic rock. You see another piece right up there, literally attached. Literally attached. I'll take a smack at it in a minute, but they form this chalcedony forms in the crevices and cracks. There's another piece right there of this volcanic rock. So we have volcanic activity. Volcanic rock is often porous, followed by geothermal activity that brought with it silica, mixed with some other minerals that give it the color. This is rather translucent but it's got that kind of purpley hue to it. Most likely iron, I'm thinking. And it's just beautiful. So this is how it's formed. It's really cool to actually follow, you know, when you're finding pieces, follow them to the source and kind of find the mother load. And that is the mother load right there. I think that's just really, really neat the way that's right there in that rock. So, you know, you could spend hours, a person could spend hours just kind of prowling around these rocks. And I've pulled out some pretty good material around here. It's absolutely gorgeous, by the way. Absolutely gorgeous today. Hot, yes, but I mean, it just doesn't get any better than this. We stop, we go slow, we stop, we get water, we're good. We take care of ourselves, but oh boy, this is fun. Are you having fun, Shadow? I'm having a lot of fun. You better be having fun. So, I'm not a professional geologist. I have taken one course in college, 
um, I've done some reading up on this area, but if I get something wrong or you think you have something to add, please do. We'll learn together. I'm not offended and I don't want to have, I don't want to put out misinformation. So if there's a professional geologist that sees something I say and you disagree, feel free to comment. All right, we're going to keep making our way. The green, there's a lot of green, by the way, as well. Some, some kind of carbon, uh, copper carbonate. And I haven't quite figured it out yet. This may not be the greatest, you know, piece here or pieces, but you can see there how, again, it's forming in the cracks and crevices of the volcanic rock. Even thin little layers of it inside these crevices. It's remarkable. Sometimes it's in bigger cavities. Sometimes it's just in little thin veins. Piece right there. Really spidery, webby. But this is where and how it's formed. The shadow is helping me find it. Once again with the green. Look at that. That's even microcrystal in there. Taking that back. I want to figure it out what that is exactly. I think it might be chrysocolla. Another piece. This is a little more grainy. But sometimes parts of it start to get a little shiny and, you know, kind of waxy. You know, microcrystalliny. What do you think this is? There's some right there against the rock. So beautiful out here. We have to wait until a little later in the day or early in the morning to come out because it's just so hot. So a lot of this, you know, kind of spider webby, really veiny, not useful. We need bigger pieces to do things with them. in there but I have to break that I don't know that's just thin thin veins of it really cool though really cool we're on the downside of that slope or the opposite side of what we came up and still we're finding great you know, examples of how this is formed. This is a beautiful, beautiful, clearish chalcedony right here. And there's quite a bit of it. Now, I'm not going to work on it tonight, but that would be an area worth chiseling around. I might chisel around it a little bit. Let me take a minute and chisel around a little bit and see what we can uncover. Well, I chiseled away at it a little bit. It's really hard, but I, I'm going to save it and come back and work on it and see if I can get around this and there's more through here but that piece right there I don't know how deep it goes I mean it might just you know it might be just what we see or it might go quite a bit deeper I'm gonna be try I'm gonna try to be careful and retrieve that because it might just be a nice big beautiful one. Ooh, what if we hear oh Oh, that is gorgeous. Let's take it down to the sunlight a little bit. Look at this beautiful piece. 
Oh, that is absolutely gorgeous. I'll put it in the shade too. I'm not sure if it's going to show better in the shade or in the sun. That is a beautiful piece. And let's see the color. Well, it's got some green on the right and then kind of the purplish on the top and bottom and then creamy white in the center. Wow, look at that green. Beautiful, beautiful. Wow. What do you think, Shadow? I think Shadow's hot. Little Shadow, I think you're ready to go home. You're hot. We've stayed hydrated, but it is a hot day. So we made our way down from the volcanic mountain. All we got to do is follow this road now back to the car about three quarters of a mile. This has been a good trip. So we have left the volcanic region and we're back now to where the dolomite is. So all dolomite. This is such an interesting area. The geology is just fascinating. That peak up there, that mountain there, that's all dolomite. So amidst all of this dolomite and even sandstone and limestone is a volcano <laughs> that brought with it geothermal activity and then along with that silica and beautiful purplish calcite. That's the thing about rock hounding, you know? You never know what you're going to find. Let's get out and hound. Rock hound. That's a perfect term. Rock hound. That's a lot of fun too. See that up there? That's dolomite up there. This is all dolomite crumbling down. So we have a minute to kill while we're walking back. I thought we'd talk a little bit about the sedimentary rocks like limestone and sandstone. You find both all throughout this region. And limestone, uh, if it is under continued heat and pressure, uh, it'll become the metamorphic rock of, well, it becomes um, marble. <laughs> limestone will turn into marble. Uh, dolomite and limestone are very similar, and sometimes it's hard to even distinguish between the two. Dolomite has a lot more magnesium in it, and often has the other heavy elements that I mentioned earlier, like iron and lead. Pyrite is very common. I see a lot of pyrite when I'm looking at this dolomite. I see this fool's gold glistening. I see if you can see it right in that rock right there. You see the light reflecting in that rock. You see that fool's gold? I'm hoping you can see it. So that that's very common with dolomite. And uh, let's see here. Sandstone, if it continues under heat and pressure, will become quartzite. And then we have mudstone, and mudstone will, under heat and pressure, metamorphism, uh, turn into shale, and then slate, and then phyllite, I think it is, and then schist, and then I think nice. I believe that is the sequence. Yeah, so the sedimentary rocks that we find up here, the limestones, the sandstones, and the mudstones, and all of their following metamorphic forms, and then volcanic rock in the midst of it all. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible geology. Well, we had a great time, Shadow and I did. We're glad you came along with us. If you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe and join us on future Adventures of Shadow. Take care.